What happened to Paul Kochu? It is a question his family says is still unanswered. Nearly five years after he disappeared and his death. Investigators say that he drowned. But his parents don't believe it's as simple as that. And they told John Shumway they won't rest until they know what really happened to their son. It was just before Christmas Eve five years ago. Paul Kochu had come home for a pre-holiday visit, but had to get back to his new job as an ICU nurse at Allegheny General Hospital. He had planned to stay longer, but a snowstorm was coming. I pushed him out of the house on Monday and said, you don't want to get stuck in snow in the mountains. But if I would have known that was the last time I was ever going to see him, I wouldn't have let him go. And it coming into home plate. The walls of the Kochu family home in Bucktown, Chester County are a tribute to the children who grew up here. But a very, very good boy wow. and very, very happy. Paul was Jack and Ellen Kochu's youngest. Paul was a football player and a baseball player. He did well at both. There's a plaque in the, in the home dugout dedicated to Paul that just touched me deeply. While the coaches are approaching five years since the night Paul disappeared, the impact of the text message from one of Paul's friends telling them that he had disappeared feels like it came in moments ago. I went like bananas because that was would be something Paul would never do, just disappear and not tell anybody where he was going. Jack and Ellen rushed to Pittsburgh only to be frustrated at every turn. The detective felt that a lot of kids that age like to blow off steam. He might have gone to a friend's house or went somewhere to cool down, and that just wasn't Paul. No. I mean, not Paul at all. They were told to wait and to see if Paul would show up for his next shift at the hospital. I knew he wasn't going to go show up for work. Something just didn't sit well with me from the get-go of that. Paul lived in this home on Warden Street on the south side with two roommates. Who basically said they just didn't know what happened to him. So there have been inconsistencies all along. What has remained consistent is that Paul and his roommates were together drinking at Smokin' Joe's during a Monday night football game on December the 15th, 2014. At first, the roommates said they all left together. But then a couple days later, we find out that Paul had left before them and had gone home, cut his hand, and called them at the tap room to come help him stop the bleeding. Back at the apartment, there was some sort of a confrontation. They said that they aren't sure what part of Paul hit the wall, whether it was his elbow, his head, his shoulder, his shoulder, you know, but that um, he had fallen. He had fallen or he got pushed? Well, we heard both mm -hmm. both stories. The roommates then left to get some food. Police say surveillance video shows them at the McDonald's on McKnight Road a short time later. When they came back, Paul was gone. This video is from a security camera down the street from Paul's house on Wharton. The coaches and the police believe this is the last image of Paul alive, clearly having difficulty walking. My thoughts are he's hurt. It was more than alcohol. Yeah. Oh, yes. Search efforts over the weeks that followed were in vain, and prayers unanswered. Comfort those who feel lonely and sad, because the one they love has vanished. There was simply no trace. As police worked with a theory that Paul ended up in the Mon River, somewhere between where he was last seen and the 10th Street Bridge. Well, that's ridiculous. Can't speculate on that kind of thing. For weeks, the coaches would travel to and from Pittsburgh. I had days where I would cry and cry, and then other days when I get really angry. We're not giving up on you, and that we will find you. Paul's sister Jessica set up a tip line. The very first tip that came up was a body was found in Wheeling. And when I read that, I knew immediately it was Paul. That was in mid-March of 2015, 94 days after Paul disappeared and 85 miles downstream with so many locks, dams, and shallows in between. Paul's body was found nude. In addition to the cut on his hand, he also had three fractured ribs, a one-inch wound on his scalp, at a blood alcohol level of 0.15. The West Virginia Medical Examiner's ruling? Undetermined freshwater drowning. The coaches don't buy it, never have. I believe if he did drown, it was not uh, from falling into the water or jumping in, killing himself. 
Nobody knows where he went in, why he went in, or how. Paul's roommates reportedly took polygraphs. The coaches were told one passed, the other was inconclusive. No two stories um, ever since the beginning have ever been the same. And I just wish that the police would have investigated that a little bit farther instead of coming to the conclusion that Paul was 22 years old, had too much to drink at Smoke and Joe's and fell in the river, case closed, next. And that's really what it felt like to me. Now, I reached out to Paul's roommates. I've gotten no response from them. I also contacted the Pittsburgh Police and the Allegheny County DA's office. The DA's office says it never received any indication of foul play. Pittsburgh police tell me they conducted a thorough investigation, but both are willing to look into any new information that might be received on this case. And that, of course, is what the coaches are hoping for, is that somebody saw something and comes forward. Yeah, unfortunately, this is eerily similar to another case that you've talked about before in the mysteries, and that's Dakota James. Give us a little background on that. He also disappeared, and there's a theory about a, a killing group. Right, a, a very, very similar. And, and of course, the smiley face killers yes. come up whenever you discuss this kind of thing. I asked the coaches about that. Ellen says that she has talked to the detectives who were doing the smiley face investigations. They don't believe that Paul Kochu was part of that. The husband, Jack, not so sure. And your heart just breaks for these Absolutely. families without having any answers as to exactly what happened. Yeah, we're coming up on the five-year anniversary. I asked them, are you going to mark this anniversary? And they say, we just let the day go by. There's just so many unanswered things. I mean, his body, no clothing, uh, no. The, the, the ribs broken and all these kinds of things. It's It sure makes you wonder. It does. It absolutely does. All right, John, thanks so much. Thanks, John.